what we're seeing so often in this US Open over the first two days is well-established players squaring off against each other. Realizes, you know, that America's the place to be in a lot of these events. And, and not only America, but the Euro places like the European Open and whatnot. Now, he's a little bit more, I think, of the really super talented player. He's kind of a hybrid of today's proper techniques along with Lobiato, who went on to win the title. Surprised he didn't, you know, elect to play. Probably like a little nip draw, trying to get the seven to come two rails out to the center of the table. And this is what I would have worried about. You know, if you hit the he's queuing down low, so we'll see. Got to be the safety, I would think, though. I played the bank. It's going to hang. No, did fall. Yeah, needed the nine to fall nicely for him there, and it has just the danger of it getting stuck to the nine. He's got such a beautiful touch and good swing, though. He kind of opens the pocket up on shots like this. Doesn't have to be hit perfectly, even though that was that match on the loser's side. One nil to Chua. Yeah, open hand break there. So, of course, not going all at it. I mean, you would definitely not use an open hand break if you and nice spreads on the balls. Good starter here. If he can get this one down, he should get in position to lengthen that early lead. More. Yeah, the Snyders, I was, of course, no Daniel, and I've watched him improve and improve. I actually got to play his brother Michael in the first tournament I played all year at the Texas State Open just a month and a half ago. And I was super impressed with Michael's game. You were talking about playing in this, Jeremy, earlier in the year. So yeah. what happened? Well, I was players' chances, and I had to play a couple of those guys trying to qualify, and I just felt like it, it, it was a no-win situation for me, and I thought more about it this year and just kind of felt like uh, that might happen again. So I figured just let them play and, and uh, see what happens and, you know, maybe entertain playing next year, Michael. 20th anniversary. There you go. Yeah. He should stay away from all the pockets. No reason to take a chance, even if you've got to cut the nine a little bit. No big deal. Now, Chua, with his swing, I really think sets up nicely for the carbon fiber shaft. As you said, it's only in being open with this break format. That match was gotten a little goofy on him there against Josh, but... Um, yeah, I think he's going to be. Round after beating David Derek Dyer by nine racks to seven. Roberto got so and play have played a lot of pool against each other. Big combo. It looks like he's rolling it too, so he's got to hit this right. Nice shot. Frail, or he could just roll past the eight. Just got to have a good speed control if he rolls it. That looks to be okay. Been around for some time. 2014, beaten by Elmer Hoyer, his compatriot at that stage. He's also been a World 10-ball semi-finalist. And won the gold medal in the 9-ball division for the Philippines at the Southeast Asian Games in Vietnam last year. So, steadily building an impressive resume. And I think we're going to see him playing a lot more in events like this, the big international open events. All the signs are he's going to be a big factor in a lot of. But yeah, I think you're going to see him out and about a lot more. And really, these these events are motivating the guys. What Matram is doing is making the players want to come out. Well, the opportunity's there to earn a good living playing in these events and get the experience of being out here on the big stage. And these guys know they won't be in their prime forever. They want to. Veil of those up last month. In August, he was a semi finalist at the Asian Open in Singapore, beaten by Copin Yi. And all the signs are nice big tournaments and, and a win right beforehand. Did the same thing so far on his trip to America, has had two big wins. 
since he's at, uh, you know, is going to end up being labeled a guy, I think, just one of the most consistent players on the planet. We heard a big cheer coming from somewhere there, JJ. We'll try and confirm what that meant. I think I may have heard Mika's. Okay, still in a good position. He just draws back, takes a little angle on the seven. Okay, he's gotten a little angle here. Can't really... how quickly things can develop. It was only about five minutes ago, Economopoulos had a great chance to get back to only two behind. Only what Chua's doing, and Chua looks pretty comfortable with the break, but just in case Nikos does get a chance to put, you know, a game on his side. Pretty soon. Chua breaking on the hill. Yeah, more of what he was looking for. Looks like the two's going to... So kind of come two rails towards the five a little bit. See how he does it slowly, though. You really got to trust the bed to get you there. And I don't know if he got enough bank here. A long rail bank with position on the, on the four and the safety if he misses. That's what he's doing. Great spot, Jeremy. Great call. And if he pulls it a little too much, he could lose that white one in the upper corner. Okay, he, he took the scratch out of out of equation and out of the It's over to the one loss side for Nikos Economopoulos. He's a much better player than we've seen in this match. In truth, he hasn't had much opportunity to show us. But from Chewers in the next round. Yeah, I'm sure them two have squared off on Co Brothers. Uh, Co Pingy a little favorite, maybe, but not much. Well, the way Johan Chua has played in this match, he's going to...